Okay. So you're 20 years old. Very cool. Thank you, Julio. Uh, what about Luca? Hi, Luca. Hello. Um, hello, my name is Luca. I'm from Lima, Peru. Um, I work in a starting, uh, we are just starting our company. Um, uh -huh. and, uh, and I study web design too. Um, yeah, I'm here to, to learn, um, I help each other. Awesome. Awesome, Luca. Yeah, uh, what about Patricia? Hello. Uh, hello, Amelia. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Patricia. I'm Patricia. I'm from Argentina. Um, nothing. I learn in English. Very cool. What do you um, do? Like, are you a student or are you working? Yes, I'm working and I study too. Oh, wow. Well, what do you do for, for work? I work in telecommunication. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Um, what about Philip? Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Great. This is very, very morning. 9 a.m. Yeah. in Thailand. <clears throat> oh, wow. Time. Okay. Yeah. Is it, it's Monday morning? Yeah, it's Monday okay. morning. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm 19 years old, I'm a first year of college student. I'm taking okay. the international business English. And that's why I study oh, cool. English very hard. And I'm just nice. doing what, what else that I should say? <laughs> um, do you have any like hobbies that you enjoy doing in your free time? Yeah, I, I have a lot of hobbies. I, I play game, <laughs> FPS, okay. first oh, okay. person should a game. Yeah. Okay. And then I play a lot of EA game, EA sports, and nice. hang out with your guy. That's my favorite. I learn a lot. Nice. Oh, thanks. Thank That's so nice. Yeah. Um, so glad. Cool. All right. What about Sergio? Uh, how's it going? It's going well. How are you doing? I'm okay. So my name is Sergio. I'm from Dominican Republic, and I'm a student. I study computer engineer, and I work as a teacher in an elementary school. Wow, that's awesome. You sound very busy. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of uh, I'm, what do you I'm here for learning. Say? Yeah, great, great. Um, what do you do in your free time? So in my free time, uh, I don't have free time, really. Yeah. But, <laughs> but in my little free time, um, I just relax, chatting in the internet. Yeah. Cool, cool. That sounds good. Um, and what about Alicia? Alicia. Can you hear us? She doesn't have a picture, so. Hey, Alicia. Oh. Nope. Sorry. Um, well, while we wait for Alicia, um, did any of you guys do anything fun this weekend? Anything? Any fun stories to share? Anything cool? <laughs> oh. Hey, I really Alicia. Wish Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, no yeah. problem. Um, well, I'm Alicia. Uh, I'm 23. I'm studying medicine. And I've been, um, I learned English like a uh, lot of years ago, but right now I'm kind of losing it. <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, practice that more. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Alicia, where are you from? I'm from Peru. Oh, cool. Okay. Very cool. A lot of, a lot of South American representatives here today. Um, did you do anything fun this weekend, Alicia? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> I just stayed at home. Yeah. Relaxed. Yeah. Yeah, you guys all sound really busy with like school and work. Um, sounds like you need some, some time to, to relax a little bit. Um, anyone else do anything fun or exciting? Hang out with friends? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think if I did anything. I didn't really do anything exciting either, so don't feel bad. Um, I ate at some good restaurants. I had Mediterranean food for the like the first time in a really long time here. Um, Do you guys know like what Mediterranean food consists of? It was like um, hummus 
and pita bread and shawarma and falafel. No, no, it's not very common in South America, so it's kind of a treat. Um, but it's like a very, it's more of, more of a basic diet, I guess, Mediterranean food. Um, and hummus is like, it's basically like a bean paste. And that sounds kind of nasty, but it's like ground up garbanzo beans with garlic and um, olive oil. And it's really, really, really good. Um, so yeah, I was pretty happy. Anytime I can eat good food, I'm like really happy. <laughs> Uh, um, Amelia, uh, uh, Luis Henrique, he's a Brazilian student, he's watching the class now and he's, he told me to say hi to you. He's watching. Oh. Well, hi Luis, thank you for watching. I'm so glad you're, you tuned in. Um, cool, yeah, I never really know like how many people are watching yeah. or who's watching outside of the class, so that's awesome. Um, well, we'll try to give you a few shout outs throughout the class, Luis. Um, yeah, so anyone else do anything? Guillermo, you just you just chill. Yeah, I'm, I'm just yeah. chilling for a long time, like months. So I'm just good. Keep doing. Good, good to hear. What about you, Julio? What did you do this past weekend? Uh, please, uh, I don't understand. Um, what sort of did you do anything this weekend? Did you? Here, I'm going to type it on the chat as well, so you can see it. Do anything this past weekend? Any fun activities? Ah, okay. Uh, I just, uh, in this, this is month, uh, I'm working a lot. <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, so you were just relaxing. Are you a programmer? Yes, yes, I, I am a programmer uh, web and games. Using oh, cool. Yeah. What sort of what sort of games do you program? Uh, edu educational games. Oh, cool! Very nice. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe you can. The children and the maybe maybe you could give some advice to Google Plus that could do something <laughs> <laughs> to put yeah. some more feature to this this video chat room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah you, but... Wait, see, so you you're from your Porto Alegre. You said, I guess. Yes. Yes. Okay. Porto Alegre. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Nice. Um, what about you? Who did we? Oh, Luca. Luca, did you do anything ex fun this weekend? Well, actually, I didn't really do anything fun. Well, nothing epic or exciting to tell or share, <laughs> yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, if we, if no one has any uh, any fun fun stuff, well, maybe hopefully this will motivate you guys to do something fun next weekend. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, so as you guys know, today is a grammar class, um, and I had kind of two things that I was thinking we could talk about. The first is irregular verbs, because um, I know a lot of times we have trouble with irregular verbs, and also hominids which are like one of my new favorite things to talk about. Does anyone know what homonyms are? Yeah. No, I do. I don't know. No. Okay. So mm -hmm. homonyms are two words that sound the same but have different spellings and meanings. Different spellings and meanings. I'm just putting it up there as well. Um, so some, like an example of a pair of homonyms would be the words for and for. Like that. So, okay. Um, and sometimes they're kind of tricky because you'll hear them, and like it's really context-based, so you have to know what context they're being used in um, to to be able to produce them correctly, I guess, and understand them correctly. Um, so maybe we can go over a few different homonyms, um, and the, and also a few different irregular verbs um, because I think irregular verbs are sort of a big a big issue. Have any of you guys, so sort of like in what context have you been learning English? Do you learn English on your own or like in a classroom? Typically. Mm. Or through a program. Any Anyone want to volunteer? Well, I did well, an English course since I was like a child, and then in in classes. Yes, classes, English classes. Okay, 
so most students in class. So probably in class, if you learned English in a classroom, you probably went over irregular verbs, and maybe you didn't like review them a ton, but you at least learn them. Because um, I find that like it's really difficult if you're learning if you're trying to learn English on your own. I think that irregular verbs are some of the harder ones. Um, so maybe what we'll start with is just I'll give you guys some verbs, and we can try to figure out what the the past tense is because usually the irregular comes in with the past tense. Um, I'm just sort of like chat about them. Um, so let's start with the word be. Let's start with like a simple one. Be. Does anyone know what the past tense of be is if you're talking about yourself? Like if I wanted to say I be a teacher, but I wanted to say it in the past, what would I say? I was a I, teacher, exactly. I was cool. a teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's an irregular. And then in the plural, what do we have for the plural? Like, if you wanted to say they blank teachers, what they was. were. Yeah, exactly. Was and were. Um, cool. So that one's like a pretty easy one to start out with. Let's go to a harder one. Um, what about become? Does anyone Be know? Became. Become. Yeah, became. And that's the same for became. I and we. Yeah, exactly. Um, what about here? I'm going to try to find like a little bit of a harder one. What about, okay, this is kind of, sort of like gruesome, but who knows? Maybe you'll be like watching a horror movie and you'll want to talk about it. What about um, bleed? Does anyone know the past tense of bleed? Like when blood is coming out of you. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's a little gross. Any ideas? Bleed. Blood. Blood, exactly. Can you give me a sentence with blood, Luca? Means you are and that's me. What is the meaning of it? What is bleed? Yeah. So bleed bleed is um when you have like blood coming out of you. If you cut yourself, um, you would be, what we would say is like you're bleeding. Um, it's when like blood is going out of your body. Okay. So if you get like a scratch or a cut, you would bleed. So he said like, I bled a little when I cut my finger. And that's the past tense of bleed. Does that make sense? Okay, I got it. Is that, what language is that, Julio, that you just typed? Is that Portuguese? Okay. What's the what's the verb for to like to bleed in Portuguese? Sangra. Sangra. So yeah. sang sangre is it sangue is past tense or sang sang? Yeah. How do you pronounce it? Sangue or sangue? Sangre would be blood. I bled. Oh, oops! I just put a new in the middle. Sorry, without the u. Okay. okay. Sangri is I bled. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm trying. I'm. I'm gonna learn a little bit. You guys can learn a little bit. Is um, the is the saying in Spanish? Yeah. What's the saying? San sangre. Sangre. Yes. That just means like I bled. Yes, in Spanish too. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Hi, Rudy. Hello. Oh, this is kind of bizarre. The camera's like far above his mm -hmm. head. I've never seen that. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> um, okay, so let's do like a few more. Um, what about, hmm, let's see. What about blow? Does anyone know what blow means? Blow. Can you use uh, this? Blue. Blow? Blue, blow. yeah. So blow, blow, like what's a sentence that you would use the word blow in? Like I... Luca, you're all over the place. She blew my mind. <laughs> That's cute. Um, yeah, she blew my mind. Or um, for like a tradition for birthdays is when you blow out the, you blow out the candles on a cake. You blow out the candles on the cake. Um, or I blew out the candles. Okay. So it seems like, or I blew a lot of money. Yeah, that's a good. That's another use of the word blow. Is like yeah. we would say blow when when you spent means yeah. to spend. Yes. Like I yeah I blew a lot of money. 
I blow a lot of money. Um, well, okay, to be so to be honest, you guys seem like pretty darn good with verbs. Um, so I don't want to like waste your time going through and just doing them because it seems like it would be like a little bit boring for you guys. So maybe we could work on homonyms a little bit more so it's a little more interactive. But I'm putting up the link in case you guys want to keep reviewing irregular verbs. Um, I just put up a link to like what I think is a pretty good site with pretty clear um, list of irregulars. Is that okay? If, is anyone like really gung-ho to keep going with irregular verbs? I know they're really important. Um, but I feel like it would just be like a lecture, and that's not really like what we're here to do. Is that cool? Yeah, cool. Okay, cool. Um, well, then let's work on some homonyms. So why don't I, I'm going to start by giving you guys a word and tell me if you can tell me like um, a few different meanings, because these words are words that um, have different meanings, obviously. Um, Okay, so what about, let's start with a kind of an easier one. What about the word I? Can anyone give me one meaning of I? Uh, so the person, like you. Yeah, exactly, so you have I like that. Um, can anyone yeah, think of another, another meaning? Let me check. Um... Think about a characteristic, maybe something on your face. I. Yeah, I, exactly. Luca typed it up. I like the I you use to see. So two meanings of I. I as in me or myself. Um, and then I as in the part of your body you use to see. Um, Body you use to see. So, can anyone give me a sentence that uses both types of I? Okay. All right, go for it, Sergio. <laughs> I like your nose like this. I'm keeping an eye on you. That's a good one. That's like a really good um, phrase as well. Does anyone, can anyone explain that phrase? Just in case, because it's more like, it doesn't actually mean I'm putting my eye on you. What does that, what does that mean, Sergio? Uh, it's paying attention or, or look after. Yeah. Exactly. It means like I'm, I'm looking out for you, or not necessarily looking out for you, but it's like I'm paying special attention to you. So a lot of times you use it almost as like a reprimand. So teachers or like, t yeah, teachers in school, I guess, could say to you like, I'm keeping my eye on you, like I'm watching you. If you're fooling around, I'm yeah. going to like yell at you or whatever, kick you out of class. Um, so it just means like you're paying special attention to someone. Um, before we move forward, Sorry, I didn't acknowledge you when you first came in, Gabrielle. Hi, how are you doing? Gabrielle. Gabrielle, can you hear us? Hello. Gabriel? Gabriel, sorry. Hello. Hi, is it Gabriel or Gabrielle? Gabrielle. Gabrielle, where are you from? I am Brazilian. I am from Brazilian. Oh, you're from Brazil? Cool, cool. Um, and are you a student? Or are you working? Or like, what do you do on a daily basis? I, stu I study. I study only. I am 17. Oh, wow. Old. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, and what do you like to do in your free time? Um, I, I only watch TV, watch movies. I like so much. Okay, cool. What kind of TV do you like to watch? Or movies? Like, do you have a specific show or maybe a genre that you enjoy? Uh, genre. I like to, to watch I like to watch series. Serials. Series. Series? Yeah, yeah. series. I like oh, cool. Glee. I like Okay. Um, I like um, Grey's Anatomy. It's my Oh Grey's Anatomy. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if you guys know about Grey's Anatomy. It's like I used to watch Grey's Anatomy um, when I was in high school a lot. It's like this medical show, but it's very dramatized, so it's almost like a soap opera. It's like just crazy stuff happens, and everyone's like 
make it oh, out with everyone and there's patience and stuff and like it's it's fun I like it I mean it's intense it's intense but. yeah I like so much I I'd like to be a doctor and because uh, it I like so much oh awesome yeah yeah, yeah. you don't want to be a doctor that's pretty funny um yeah. cool okay cool well now that we have Gabrielle um joined in okay so we did I it seems like everyone pretty much gets that because it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. What about the word new? Can I, does anyone have a? Can anyone give me one definition of new? What can you? Can, can you, you repeat? Can you repeat? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we're sorry. I don't know if you were here, Gabrielle, when we were talking about um, homonyms. So right now we're working on homonyms, which are two words that have different spellings and meanings. But sound the same. Sure. So the word that we're working on right now is new. Does anyone know one meaning of the word new? New. Yes, yeah. I knew it. Like I have the, I had the knowledge. Yeah. Exactly. So between new, Sergio. So new is something that is happening. Something that is taking place right now. Sort of, yeah. So Guillerme, Guillerme had the first one. Guillerme had the first one, which is like knowledge, like it's the past tense of no. Um, like I knew you know. something um, to, to have the knowledge of something, to have the knowledge of something. And then the other one, like you put Sergio, knew, N-E-W, means something um, that wasn't there before. Um, so, like, something recently introduced. Yes. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. What about you, Patricia? Can you give me a sentence that uses both types of new? New For example, and new. Um, I know I speak German or I know I speak Portuguese, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the one for new. Do you think you can figure out a sentence that incorporates both types of new, like using both new and new? I'll give you an example. So, like, my the sentence I was thinking of in my head is that um, I knew that the new iPhone was coming out. Phone. Um... Yeah, no worries. Do you think you can think of another one, Patricia? Let's see. Yeah, Sergio said, I knew that the phone that you bought was new. Does that make sense? I mean, those ones are pretty, seem pretty easy. It seems like you guys know that. So maybe we'll move forward. I have one now that has actually three different meanings and spellings. So maybe this one will throw you guys for a loop. Um, that's a good phrase too. Does anyone know what the phrase "throw you for a loop" means? Throw you for a loop. Any ideas? Th throws you for a loop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me think. <laughs> it's hard. We'll, just, we'll just wait for Sergio to think for a little bit. No, um, any ideas? No? Okay, it just, we also have throw you a curveball is another phrase that means the same thing. Curveball. And it just means that it's something that like took you by surprise or something that is sort of going to challenge you. So, for example, you could say like, it threw me for a loop when um, the teacher gave us a surprise test. Like it surprised me. It was I was unprepared for it. Um, or yeah, it's sort of like in reference to anything that comes up that you didn't know was going to happen, uh, and that could like possibly challenge you. So when I said like, okay, the next word we're going to have has three meanings. So hopefully it will throw you guys for a loop. So hopefully it'll like surprise you a little bit, or make it a little more challenging. Make sense? Is throw you a loop significate? Is 
surprise. Yeah, it's like surprise, and it's also it's, it's sort of su surprise and challenge. Um, it's an expression. Wow. Yeah, it's an expression. Perfect. It's a, it's it's an idiom. An yeah, idiom. it's an idiom. Exactly, it's an idiom. Um, and the same with throw throw you a curveball. So you could say, for example, um, the teacher threw us a curveball on the test and made us answer questions about the material from last year. So it's something that will like make it a little more difficult for you. Um, and it, I mean, it comes from the curveball one. At least I think comes from baseball. So like I don't know how many how much you guys know about baseball. I know it's like primarily. Um, American sport, but a curveball is like a ball that the pitcher throws, and then at the very end, it like curves, so it's really hard for the batter to hit it because you don't know when it's going to curve or you don't know that it's going to curve. Um, so that's like where this, the idea comes from that like you don't know what's going to happen and you have to deal with it. Um, yeah, does that make sense? Yes. Could someone, do you think that someone, okay, Sergio, you said yes, so could you give us like a sentence maybe that it utilizes it so that we can have like one more example? Yes. You can just say it out loud too. I can understand. Can you repeat? Oh yeah, no, 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 that's fine, I'm sorry. I was going to ask you to give us a sentence that uses one of those idioms, that uses either throw you for a loop or throw you a curveball. Okay. Let me, let me, let me think. Wow. Okay. My question, so my question threw you for a loop. Anyone? Feel free to like shout out. It doesn't have to be Sergio. I'll be very impressed if anyone could could use that in a sentence for us. And maybe um, what have you guys had anything surprising happening to you lately? Maybe repeat any times. Yeah, I was just wondering, have any of you? Had a surprising experience lately? Have any of you had a surprise? But actually, I got an idea of the beginning verse. Try to find a situation to to put it in. <laughs> or have you have you seen a movie yet? Or have you? I know a lot of you said that you enjoy like watching movies and TV. Have you seen any movies or television yet that with a surprise ending maybe? Like, did anyone see the bat, the newest Batman movie? Yeah. The, I don't know what it's called in your respective languages. The Dark Knight Rises, or um, what would they call it here? Oh, they called it um, El Caballero de la Noche. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So, Patricia, the it's not actually like. The person throwing you for the cur throwing the curveball is the other person, the person that's surprising you. Uh. So, yeah, 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 it's the opposite. So, like Sergio said, the teacher threw you for a loop when he found out you cheated. That wouldn't actually be like necessarily the context we'd use it in. It would be like the teacher threw you for a loop by doing something. Like you, that would be you threw the teacher for a loop um, when you cheated because he didn't expect that. Expect you to. Does that make sense? So, I don't know how many of you guys saw Batman, and I'm not going to give away the ending, because if you didn't, you should see it. It's literally like one of the best movies that I've seen recently. It was so awesome. I, I went to the. I never do this, and I went to the movie theater twice to see it. Like I paid two times to see it because it was so good. Um, but the the ending was really surprising and threw me for a loop. Like I it it surprised me basically. 
Does that make sense? I feel like we're like still a little unclear about the meaning and the usage of the. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't say that. The ending was really surprising and threw me for a loop. Yeah, exactly. Alicia gave me a really good one. Like my teacher threw me for a loop when he told me I could fail the course. Maybe because you thought you were getting an A. And like if you thought you were getting an A in a class and a teacher said to you, you're you could fail this class. That would be like throwing you for a loop because you had no clue. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm. I feel like we're still a little unclear. Let's see. I I feel you a little. I feel you a little when I kiss you. Yeah, if you kiss someone out of the blue and they didn't expect it, you could say I threw her for a loop. I threw her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anytime you do something surprising or you surprise someone. How are you guys feeling about that idiom? Okay, not good. If we're not good, like we can totally do more examples. So that's completely fine. Okay. All right. When I found my girlfriend with an yeah, exactly. Okay, that's a really good one, Sergio. Yeah. I like the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Your champ. You won. Um, so Sergio, that's good. Okay, that's definitely a good usage of it. When I found my girlfriend with another boy, she threw me for a loop. Yeah. So. That would be very sad and surprising. Yeah. Um, I hope that hasn't happened to any of you because that would be really bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that is the that is the correct usage. <laughs> that is a good good job, Sergio. Thanks. Um, alrighty. So with that, I think you guys are ready to go on to the next homonym. Um, all right. So the one I was thinking about is the word holy. Does anyone know one of the uses or one of the spellings or uses or meanings of the word holy? Holy. I I only can I can only think about one. The like okay. something related to like yeah. sacred. Yeah, exactly. Holy. Holy. Yeah, so that one's holy. Oops, sorry. Holy, the one that Guilherme just said. Um, and that just means like, yeah, sacred. That sacred. Um, so another one is H O L E Y, and that one means holy, like it has a lot of holes in it. So, okay. for example, like if you have a wall, say there's like a mouse hole, in the wall, there's like many mouse holes in the wall, you could say the wall is holy. Or, like, if you leave a sweater, I don't know if any of you have ever le left a sweater in storage and, like, moths eat little holes in your sweater. If you leave them, you could say, my sweater is holy. Well, maybe that holy cheese. Yeah, holy cheese, like, is that Swiss cheese? That's the holy cheese? I really I'm don't not know. Sure. Holy. Um, yeah, I don't know which cheese... That is, but there is a whole, yeah, it is Swiss cheese. So I just Swiss call it holy cheese. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes people use that actually as a play on words. Like, people that really love it, they'll say, like, oh, it's holy cheese because it's like, I love it. It's holy, H O L Y, but it's also holy, like, um, it's got a lot of holes in it. This is a cheese for anyone that I looked oh. it up because I wanted to know if it was Swiss. That's um, yeah, I know. I don't know why whenever I put picture links up, it's always like really, really big. Um, but yeah, so holy, and then we actually have one more, which is with a W, which is W H O, which means complete, like um, entirely, like holy, the whole of it was there. Um, and a lot of times people actually, there's also a different, like a, on a side note, there's um, a saying that a lot of people say like holy cannoli or holy guacamole, uh, which means like, oh my gosh. So you could say like holy cannoli um, instead of oh my gosh. My sister says that a lot. She's sort of weird, but like she uses that a lot instead of 
oh my god. Um, so, yeah. The third one, the holy as in completely, like you would say, like, we were wholly there, like we were there, we were all there, we were completely there. Um, but the, the last one is used, I would say, a lot less, the W-H-O-L-L-Y. But um, could anyone give me a sentence with holy, H-O-L-Y, and H-O-L-E-Y? Holy and holy. The whole word. What's that, Gabriel? Gabriel? The whole word. The whole word. The could, you, could you think of a sentence that uses both H O L E Y holy and H O L Y holy? You can't. I can't use the cheese one. You can use the cheese one. Yeah, you could say the holy cheese for the H. That's the H O L E Y. Yeah, it just says the the holy cheese is holy or something. Mm. Yeah, you can say that. Okay. Well, let's try to think of a sentence, Sergio, so you can get a little bit more. So Julio put down holy priest. So you could say, let's think, like the holy priest, the holy, holy priest. Has a holy sweater? Has, exactly, a holy sweater. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Um, so, Sergio, let's review the meanings one more time. So, okay. holy, H-O-L-Y. Um, Guilherme, do you want to give us the definition one more time of holy, H-O-L-E-Y? Sacred. Sacred. Um, so it's used a lot when we're talking about, like, religion or things that you really like. Like, sometimes people use it as an exaggeration, and they'll be like, Oh, this chocolate is holy because it's so good. Um, okay. But, but the like traditional definition has to do with religion and something that's sacred. Um, so that's why I use like the holy priest. And then the second one, the H O L E Y, means something with like holes in it. Like we did you see the picture of the cheese? Yes. The holy yes, cheese. I did. Yeah. So we, that's what like Guillerme calls that holy cheese. Okay. Um, because it's got holes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, um, and then the final one, H O L L Y, we use that probably less. It means it's an adjective to mean the whole, like in t the entirety. So yes. like, it's yes, entirely. I got, I got it. I got okay. it. Yeah. So those are the three. So everyone is everyone clear on those three definitions? Yeah. What about one more? Could someone give us like one more sentence? What about you, Philip? Okay. Do you think you could give us a sentence with um, two of those uses of holy? I'm going to uh, I'm going to write it down uh, in a sample. Oh, great. Okay, thank you, Sergio. You're like the example master of this class. <laughs> I don't know if Philip is Philip is listening or not. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm listening, I'm listening. Oh, Sorry yeah, yeah. for that. No, 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 no. Yeah. don't worry about it. I, I wasn't got, trying to call you I off. Got, Sorry, I go got ahead. the quiet meaning, but just okay. can't make up the situation. For yeah, this. that's fine, that's fine. Well, hopefully, yeah, so. Sergio... No, a lot of ho holy, holy it's, you know, it's related to religion, religion things a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, holy yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Holy, yeah, holy yeah, Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of lot of um, religious words. Yeah, I know, uh, another one is the B H O, double L Y. This one, I mean, people might really use it because they use another word instead. Yeah, right? they usually use like yeah. entirely. Yeah, yeah, like, a lot of the, it's, it's just a, less they common. omit this one instead. Exactly, exactly. So I put yeah, I put it up there because it is a meaning of holy, but it is less common. Um, yeah, Jeez. so. That was that's good. Um, generally, here, Sergio, we would say she spent her whole life complaining about her problems instead of her holy life um, or her entire life. But um, you could say like her, yeah, holy Jesus, the rain. Wow, holy Jesus, rain day, rainy day. My sister's dress ended up holy wet. Yeah, Luca, that is very impressive. Wow. 
Lucas <laughs> is coming up with like examples left and right. Um, yeah, exactly. Wow, I'm like really <laughs> impressed that you were able to figure out all three of them. I don't even know if uh, I could have done that. I have um, a question. Like, yeah, go ahead, Guillermo. Can you say that th th this person was wholly there, like completely there, into the yeah. task? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could say they were wholly there. Um, but again, sort of like what what Philip and I were talking about is just like wholly. I threw that in, but we don't. You wouldn't hear that very commonly, like spoken on the street. It would be more in maybe in academic writing. Um, usually, people would say like she was entirely there or she was completely there. Completely, I guess, would be the most common. Um, but Luca did a really good job of incorporating all three. I don't know if you guys can see it. Holy Jesus, that rainy day, my sister's dress ended up wholly wet and holy. Um, so, yeah, that's a really good good usage of it. But, again, don't worry too much about holy with the WH. Um, you would say she's, like, holy there to mean that she's, like, entirely there. But, um, yeah, we usually use, like, a different word, like, completely. Um so is everyone clear on the meanings of those? For the most part, I'm not hearing any like yelling of misunderstanding. So maybe we'll keep keep on trucking. Um, does anyone know the phrase "keep on trucking"? Keep it's sort on of um, what we would call like a down trucking. Keep on yeah, trucking. it's sort of like a. Yeah, it's sort of like a Midwest or like Southern phrase. Like you wouldn't use it academically um, at all, but it just sort of means like to keep going, like to keep pushing forward, keep going, or keep. I don't. I, I I'm very familiar with this phrase, this idioms. You keep are. You are it's, familiar. It's a song, right? It's a song, right? Keep on trying. Sing us a song. Sing us a song. <laughs> no, it's, I'm sure it's in a song. I'm sure it's in a song. Trucking. Yeah, sorry. Trucking is not actually a word. We just say keep on trucking. It's like keep on trucking. Um, I'm trucking as in the verb to like drive around in a truck. Um, I'm trucking. So... Yeah, it's like keep on going. Yeah, like you can do it. Keep on trucking. And there was this big phase, like in t maybe like two thousand three. I'm not really sure, where a lot of people like had hats or shirts that said "Keep on trucking." It was just I don't know. It just like became really popular all of a sudden. But yeah, um, exactly. The phase just means like keep on going. Um, it's not necessarily, yeah, it's I'm not necessarily it. like you're doing the, a better job, but it's like keep on working at it. Like, it's in, it's a statement of encouragement. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Uh, keep walking. Like this? Keep walking? Keep walking? It's not necessarily walking. It's just like keep doing what you're doing. So, for example, um, let me try to think. Keep of on this way. It's like a keep on this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, for example, if you were a teacher and you had a student that was like working really hard on the essay and they're like improving every day on this essay that they're working on, you would be like, "You're doing great. Keep on trucking." Does that make sense? You walk the right, uh, right way. Yeah, it's like you're doing. It's not necessarily has to do with walking. It doesn't have to do with walking, but it's like you're doing. Yeah, what you're doing. Like keep doing what you're doing. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, keep doing what, what you're doing. Keep moving forward. Yeah, why don't you make it easier by saying just keep going? And yeah. Whatever you are doing, you just say keep going. Yeah. You're doing exactly. It's keep doing what you're doing. Um. Okay. So on that note, we will keep on trucking to the next uh, pair of words. What about the words lesson? Can anyone think of? Oh my gosh, this is insane. Sorry. Side note. Um, this is not relevant, but like, I don't know where you guys are in the world right now, but right now it's raining like crazy here. Um, it was raining crazy like two hours ago here. Yeah, okay. That's one thing I've noticed in South America. It will rain here for hours upon end. Like in the States, it usually, like it will rain for a few hours and it will clear. Or at least where I live, like it will clear. It doesn't rain for like seven hours, but here... It's been raining since, like, 3 p.m., and it's still raining, like, really hard. But 
it's crazy because there's a lot of lightning. Was there lightning in Brazil? Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Usually it doesn't take long, but when it comes, it's like really strong and crazy. Ex yeah. Okay. Yeah, but really lightning, like really strange noises and stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's, so it's like raining, and every once in a while, like every two or three minutes, I see these like big bolts of lightning, but it's like clear to the point because I have a window that I sort of face, like that's right behind where the computer is. Um, and. You can see the bolts, though. It's not just like you can see the flat. Like sometimes you just see flashes of light, but sometimes yeah. you see like really see clear it. bolts. It's really cool, yeah. actually. It's really cool, yeah. It's like a little bit frightening, but it's also really awesome. Yeah. Um, so sorry for that side note, guys. I was just like, ugh, gosh, that's crazy. Um, so lesson. Does anyone know a meaning or a spelling of lesson? I only know the the one that we are having now. Lesson. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. That's one. So there's one lesson is what we are doing right now, which is like a class, class or a time that you learn, um, or a thing that you learn, or a thing that you learn. Um, the other one is. Let me give you the spelling and tell me if you think you can figure out the meaning. Lesson like that. It's a verb. Like, it's a verb re related to the word last? Like, yeah, exactly. Like last, last thing? I don't know. Yeah, lesson, as in L-E-S-S-E-N, is like to make less. Is to make less or diminish. Or, or, oops, sorry, diminish or lower. So you could say, um, we lessened the amount of wood. This is like a bizarre sentence. Hold on, let me think Can of another say, sentence. Is, uh, um, they lessen the production? Yeah, exactly. Like, if you're going to make less of a good, you can say, like, we'll, we'll lessen the production. Um, yeah, or like, let me think. They lessened the amount of time needed to make the to make dinner because they got a new oven. Um, so they lessened the amount of time. So because they got this new oven, it took less time to make dinner, so they lessen the amount of time. Or, yeah, if you lessen the hour of study, it means, like, you need less time to study. You make smaller the amount. It's to make smaller. Um, yeah, exactly, Luca. Good job, Luca. <laughs> I like that. So like funny. That. Yeah, that's good. Um, does that make sense with the lesson, as in, like, decrease? But I, I don't, is it use it like a lot this one? Um, not as much. You would probably like usually say decrease. Yeah. Um, but I mean, they do use it. Like you would say, like um, in the winter, that they lessen the amount. It's like a. It's like a reduce. Yeah, it's just reduce. It's just reduce. reduce. But like that's a thing. It is more common to use the word reduce or decrease than the word lesson. But it, I mean, lesson does. I would say lesson comes up more than holy comes up. Um. So, for example, like here, let me give one more example. When he was in the library, library, he lessened his voice to a whisper. That's like another example. But again, it's more, I would say, in academic senses, like academic writing. Not as much in like everyday usage. Because like you would just say if he went to the library and he whispered, or he was quieter, he was in the library. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But does anyone, can anyone think of a sentence using lesson and lesson? Luca did that really good. What's up? 
Yeah, really? Luca did. Luca did that. Oh, Luca really already good. did it. Yeah. With oh, the cape on trucking. Yeah, oh my one. gosh! Yeah, I didn't even realize that's so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Luca. <laughs> Luca's got yeah. like. That's. I think that's like your third, awesome sentence. Um, can anyone else follow Luca's fantastic example and maybe give us another one? I guess it would always be like in this context, it would probably be an academic sentence. So yeah. it would be along the same lines as Luca's when he said, keep on trucking. I'm just going to put it up one more time. Or right, everyone can scroll up. Keep on trucking. Don't lessen your attention on your English lessons. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Wow. Really impressive. You could say uh, they, uh, they lessen the time of the study time because they're attending to more lessons. Like they stop studying at home. Get it? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That that's a good one as well. Yep. And that totally works. Oof. Shoot. I just closed my hominid page. Um. Yeah. Is everyone like pretty clear on the two two meanings of lesson, lesson and lesson? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm not getting a resounding no, so we will move. Continue have, to move. Forward. I have a like. I could have a suggestion. Like, uh, yeah. I could say the firstly home home on him. How do I say that? The home what? That I home on him. How do I say that? Hominem, Hominem? Yeah. yeah, the first one I learned. I could say it. Okay. Like the first one I learned. It was okay, like, go for it. It was flower. That oh, was cool. Okay. Do I you want to shout? Um, can you share? Why don't you teach this one then? Okay. So, does anybody know like another meaning for flower besides flower? The plant? Or you know? Anyone? Any ideas? I think you guys know this one. Maybe something that you use in cooking? Any ideas? All right, Gary, why don't you use, yeah. uh, just share the share, share both of the definitions with us. So flour would be the, the thing you use to bake, like, yeah, exactly, Alicia. That, that one. Oh, flour. Yeah, because, like, when I learned it, I was, like, spelling, I was saying it r wrong, and someone mm -hmm. teached me, and they said, oh, it, it says flour, and I was like, well, like the flour? So then they, they explained me what homonym was, because mm -hmm. I didn't know. Well, well, I have a question. When you say, like, you're, you say making cakes or baking cakes, or it doesn't matter? You can you say can both? both? You can use both, okay. yeah. It doesn't matter. You can say I baked, I baked a cake or I, I made a cake. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry. Do you want to continue? Yeah, that's it. So I don't know. Maybe maybe Luca will give us a sentence with both. <laughs> yeah, Luca, can you treat us to a sentence? <laughs> um, I wanna try. I'm gonna try. Okay. That one is really. I I don't know. That would be hard for me because it they're not related yeah. at all. They aren't related, so it is difficult. I'm gonna try to think of one too. Okay. Okay. Oh, I thought of one, but I'm going to wait for Luca's because I'm, I'm excited. I think it'll probably be better than mine. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, my. I guess. Yeah. Could be. Nice. Yeah, you could do that. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Alicia. Power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. Oh, poor. That, that's me? What, what is the meaning of it? It's like that. Like, you have some powder, and then you just do like that. Can you see in the video? Like, okay. Put in it. Like, it's to, yeah, to put on top of. You could also use it, you, we use it a lot for beverages, like you pour water into a glass. Yeah, like that's that. the action of, like, putting something in. 
Um, okay. I had another sentence, which is just like, I mean, it doesn't connect them that much, but it uses both of them. Um, mine was a command. It's, please, thanks, Gabrielle. See you later. Um, bye bye. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Please bye. put bye. the flowers in the <laughs> vase on the counter. Please put the flowers in the vase. Um, next to on the. On the counter. Yeah, next to the flower. Next. Can I say flower sack? Flower? Yeah, I was going to say the next to the sack of flour. Okay. Next to the sack of flour. Exactly. Yeah, so it doesn't really use them. Like, they're kind of connected. It's kind of a stretch. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, well, I think we have time for... Does that make sense? Sorry to everyone. Thank you, Hilaire May, for sharing that. Sergio, did you have a question? Or were you going to say something? Sorry. No, I don't have a question. I'm okay. okay. I'm good? Okay. In that case, I think we have time for one more before we wrap up. Does anyone, I really liked that Guilherme was able to share one with us. Does anyone have any other hominins that they know about? Or, I don't know, Guilherme, if you have another one that you have learned in your past? I, I, you know, I could search for it, but that this one I never forget because this was the yeah. first one I learned. This is a good yeah. One of the ones that just like notice when I use it, like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I just. Sun. Sun just... is one. Sun, sun is one I. Ah uh, yes. Sun is uh, uh, really uh, normal. Do you yeah. wanna? Yeah, Sergio. Exactly, Sergio. Why don't you tell us then about those two two different suns? Sun is like <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. The first one. The first one is if you have, for example, if you have a baby, you have a son. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the father's child. Yes, the and the, child. the yes, child. and the and the another is a big big star. <laughs> yes, okay. exactly. The other son is like the big ball of heat in the center, big star ball of heat in the yeah. center. Of heat. The, uh, with yeah, with with a lot of fire. Yes. It's like just one big fireball, I'm pretty sure. Um, so do you think you could use those in a sentence, Sergio? Okay. Or, us, or, or Luca, either one. Okay, <laughs> let, let me write it down. Hold on a second. Okay, go for it. Take your time. Or anyone, actually. Everyone feel free to. This is our last one, so if everyone if everyone has sentences... Actually, I have a doubt in my sentence. Oh, yeah? Um, is the last word correct? Correct, uh, spell correct. My son is taking a sun bath. Yeah, you mean like tanning, like laying out in the sun? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I don't we think would, it's we, would we actually have a word for that, which is sunbathing. So okay. you could say, my son.